Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. So in today's video, this is a celebration video. We haven't done one for a long time. I wanted to thank you guys for 75 thousand subscribers. I am blown away. I can't believe how close we are to 100,000 subscribers. I can't wait to eventually one day get that play button. And we're also celebrating my birthday in this video. And we are also celebrating the fact that I've been on YouTube now for two years. As you guys know, for the first year of my YouTubing experience, I did upload every day for a year. This past year, I did Vlogmas, which was again uploading every day, and I went down to about one to two uploads a week. Sometimes I give you guys three, sometimes I give you guys four. It's been a little bit sporadic, but either way, I've been so happy and so blessed that you guys have stuck with me and we've also grown exponentially. Now let's get to today's video. What I'm doing here is I'm making several different colors in one macaron batch. You saw I carefully had to measure everything out and I was really, really happy with the way that these macarons turned out. I feel like having done them so many times now on my channel, I'm really, really getting the hang of exactly what works. Now, prior to making my channel, I did successfully make several batches of macarons, but I just feel like now I've really, really got it down packed for sure. And and I just have to give a shout out to these nonstick mats. They are my absolute favorite. If you guys have struggled with macarons, definitely go out and buy some of these. Now this particular video isn't really a full on tutorial video. There are going to be some tutorials throughout this, but really I'm just showing you what I did to create my kind of tiki party bar setup for my birthday this year. Now, I was under a lot of stress when creating this whole dessert table because I also had my niece's birthday party the day after, so I didn't want to do too many things. Luckily, my friend Rachel from Happy Cakes actually volunteered to make my birthday cake this year, so that did take off a lot of the stress, and it was also a fun little surprise element as well because I had no idea what the cake was going to look like. I did tell Rachel that I did want super punchy colors, so we'll see later on in the video what she came up with. Now I'm just sprinkling some of the macarons. I really want to differentiate which ones are going to be the strawberry flavor and which ones are going to be that mango flavor there. Here I'm just showing you how I fold together all of my ingredients. I feel like every time I make a macaron video, I really want to show you guys this step in real time so that if you are trying to pick up some tips, hopefully you might. I find with my recipe, the best thing to do is to fold in all of the ingredients first, make sure they're fully, fully incorporated, and then I'll begin taking out the air out of the macarons. That really gets the batter to turn into a batter. You're really beating out some of that air in the meringue. Now, in order to reduce the amount of work that I'm doing over this weekend, I really tried to kind of make similar things that could be used for both parties. So this blue color is gonna go really well in my kind of tropical tiki table, but it's also gonna go really well with my niece's birthday party, which is going to be all Cinderella themed. So I'm hoping that maybe I'll be able to use some of the pink macarons and some of the blue macarons for that party as well. I am using tipless piping bags, but I've added in a tip in here. I just find that when I use just the tipless when I'm using macaron batter, I find it doesn't flow as well and I end up getting kind of a weird shape. So I always like to use a nice big rounded tip. It really doesn't matter what size you use as long as it's super round and not like a size two. You wanna make sure it's probably size five and above. And this is the final tray, really trying to squeeze out every last bit. The macaron batter takes a little while to put together, so it's always important to use every single last drop. And here we are letting them rest. This is not a no rest recipe. It does really well when it rests. I rest my batter for about an hour to an hour and a half sometimes. While my friend Andrea helps me match up all of those shells, I am going to be making the compotes. This grilled pineapple, I say grilled in quotations because it wasn't quite grilled, was absolutely delicious. I am going to be kind of modeling all of the flavors after that little mix you saw there. We're chopping up some dried mangoes, some dried strawberries, and some dried pineapple as well. They were sticking together a little bit, so we're just gonna run them through a little bit of granulated sugar to give them a nice crunch. And these are actually gonna go inside of the center 
center of the macaron just to really sell that fruit flavor. And here I am using the magic bullet. I love using the magic bullet for when I just need a little bit of compote. And then I'm going to be making my coconut ganache here. Now you're really just taking that really yummy thick part of the coconut milk to make that ganache. All right, now all of the toppings are ready and I'm going to start filling things up. I wanted to keep this very, very tropical. Now, to my surprise, the chocolate coconut ganache really didn't actually taste like coconut at all. It's just, I guess, a vegan way of making ganache. Whatever it is, it was very delicious. The texture is very, very pleasing. Highly recommend it if you are vegan or if you just want to stay away from dairy or choose a different type of ganache recipe to make. The recipe that I used specifically for this was the one from Pies and Tacos. Definitely go and check her out on YouTube. She has tons of recipes and tons of different things that you can do with your macarons mixing this all together and I'm actually going to use this to line all of the macarons now one thing is I did have to let this set for quite a long time it said it would set within 40 minutes but I really waited overnight for it to set now one thing about this ganache is it is a little bit gloopy in comparison to your average ganache so it does kind of have a little bit of a pull to it but the texture is very very nice and creamy. I'm going to make the blue ones pure coconut ganache and then I'm going to dip it in this toasted coconut which I just did right in the pan. It's super super easy to do it. I should have packed in more of that coconut I think. Next time I will actually fold in the coconut with the ganache if I'm going to do that flavor because the coconut itself really wasn't that present. And for the rest of the macarons, I'm just going to make a little dam with the ganache and then fill it in very, very generously. I wanted to go nice and thin on the dam so I could get as much compote here as possible. I didn't really measure out my compote. I just kind of dumped the frozen fruit into the pot and hoped for the best. So I ended up having a lot of the leftover mango one. I wish I could have fit in more of this candied fruit, but unfortunately there just really wasn't enough space. Luckily, the flavors were quite punchy and fairly discernible as well. I always underestimate how long it really takes for this process. It's not a tedious process and it's not super, super long, but it does take around 30 to 45 minutes for me to fill and cover all of the macarons, which is approximately 80 macarons. And at this point, I had just come home from my niece's birthday dinner and it seemed like I just had a growing list of things to do and none of them were getting done. So I was really kind of rushing at this point. After filling all of those macarons and placing them in the fridge just to set up overnight, I got to baking all of the cookies and then the next morning they were all ready to go to be decorated. I'm just taking my pipe and flood consistency and I decided to go for pink for the strawberries just to really give it that fun tropical vibe. I wanted to keep things easy, but this wasn't exactly the type of thing where I could use all the same color palette. Usually having to change colors is what really slows me down. So I decided this time that maybe I would just do some simpler designs, but have lots of different colors. And by lots, quote unquote, I really just mean four, which I know doesn't sound like that many, but for me, I generally just try to keep to two colors to make things easy on myself. Anyway, back to these tropical leaves. What I did here was I created some holes in it. This seems to be kind of the look for these leaves. So you just create the holes using, again, the pipe and flood consistency, and then just pipe around all of those. All of my flooded cookies today spent about five to 10 minutes in the oven at 175 degrees Fahrenheit, just so that everything solidifies up. It's really just the surface layer that's getting solidified. And then on top here, I get to add all of my details without things sinking in. Now this is a different piping consistency. This time around, I am using a fairly thick piping consistency. The reason is not because this particular part of the design needs it, but I was planning on doing some flowers that do need a really, really thick consistency. Then I'm going ahead and adding the stem of the strawberry. This is actually the pipe and flood consistency. I just kind of switch back and forth here to whatever I can actually use, but you could also use a stiffer piping consistency for that as well. Now I was noticing that some people like to use a thick consistency for this and then kind of pipe it on like a leaf, but if I actually look at the leaves of a pineapple, they're actually fairly smooth, so I decided to go with this look instead. And of course I have to do some of them first, let that dry and then stack the rest on top. If I try to do it all together, everything will just blend. 
Again, going in with that super thick consistency. Now doing lines like this doesn't actually need this thick of consistency, but because I wanted to be efficient, I wanted to use all the same piping consistency so I didn't need to change things up. Full disclosure though, it does make cross hatching a lot easier, especially if you do make mistakes, then it's able to lift off really easily because that icing is so dry. To make your consistency thicker, by the way, I always add a few more tablespoons of meringue powder and some icing sugar. I find that the meringue powder, though, keeps things nice and fluffy, so then that way it doesn't hurt your hand too, too much. Same consistency again, and using this to create these line details on the leaves. You don't have to do this part. You can also paint it on with edible paint. You can use your airbrush instead, but I do like to add a little something different just to give it more definition. Now going back in and adding those leaves. Again, this was in my oven to dehydrate just a little bit so we get those layers nice and dry. You can do that with a thicker consistency, but it won't lay nice and flat. Now here, I'm going with my thicker consistency that I had before. I just cut my tipless piping bag into a V shape to create these leaves. And you just kind of hold it flat and you squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. You can wiggle it around a little bit if you want your leaf to look a little bit more curly, but I'm just pulling mine straight out. I felt like my pineapples needed a little something extra, so I'm adding on all of these little flowers with that thick piping consistency, keeping things really, really simple. I could have used my Russian tips for this as well, but I decided I wanted some simple flowers to go on there. Now I'm airbrushing my strawberries, and this is why the pink was so light. If I had done it darker, then this airbrushing would not show up. And I'm really just directing this airbrush all the way around the edge, and I'm not really doing anything on the leaves, maybe letting it kiss just a little bit. And I cannot let this party continue on at all without a little bit of gold. So I'm putting this on the pineapples. It just is giving it a really nice light sheen. It's not gold in your face, just a little bit of that sparkle when it's on that dessert table. And giving the leaves a nice airbrush. You'll notice that I did start with the lightest color to airbrush and then went to the darkest. I do clean in between, but I just find this guarantees that everything will turn out nice and clean. I was so glad when the cookies were done, it really felt like I had accomplished something and I could finally move on to the next task. Now that next task was actually for my niece's birthday and I was moving on from my own thing, but Rachel was hard at work making my cake. So let's get into that right now. So I'm really pleased that Rachel has styrofoam because I surely can't find any styrofoam local to me. There is a place that I do know of. It's just a little bit far, so I haven't gotten any, but super pleased that she found some styrofoam that fits perfectly with this cake. And yes, I have featured that stand there right in the middle. Prior to Rachel making this cake, she came to my house and got all the things that she needed for my cake. Her and I, although we do things very similarly, we also have very different styles. So she she came and she got all of the things that she knows I like, like that floating tear stand. And she also got a whole bunch of my airbrush colors as well to use because she really doesn't use airbrush that often. But speaking of how alike we are, we both definitely watch Charlotte Dobre while we're cake decorating. So shout out to that fellow Canadian YouTuber. She's so funny. So after adding on all of that shortening, she covered this tier in fondant. You might be wondering, what is she doing now? She's actually adding on more shortening here and then putting on this edible image. And I absolutely love this leaf pattern. Rachel did briefly ask me what the setup was going to look like for the desserts, and I said punchy colors, really tropical, and lots of flowers. So she definitely took that to heart and fought every instinct she had to put any pastels on this cake. She is a big pastel person, as well as a primary colors person, which I am definitely not. So I'm super grateful that my cake bestie definitely got this cake right for me. She put in tons of punchy colors here. Super, super fun. I love the sunset and the orange kind of all mixing together. Now, Rachel didn't actually tell me how long this cake took her to make, but I feel like probably one hour she could do this in. She is that amazing. I also like watching the technique that she's using here. She really wants to make sure that the stand is getting full coverage. So instead of doing that on an actual cake turntable, she decided to do it right on the stand, which is smart so that she can get everything nice and covered up. Now my friend Martin actually made that cake stand for me and he did make it so that it would be food safe. So it can also be used to house real cakes, which if you guys watched my Finding Nemo cake tutorial, that is exactly what we did. 
I so appreciate as well that Rachel took the time and effort to make sure that that cake stand was covered up so that it didn't all get dyed. It takes a lot of effort to airbrush big things like this, that is for sure. Now she's going ahead and rolling out that fondant nice and thin. Ooh, I love watching it go super, super fast. Again, being sure to cover up that cake stand in the middle. She did mention that that was a little bit of a project to make sure that everything was fully covered. Time to make this a little bit more tiki by adding in these panels on the side. I really like the way she does this. I've seen lots of molds that do this in one go, but Rachel's pretty quick at this, so I'm pretty sure she just made one long roll of fondant, cut it up, and then she also gave it an extra dose of airbrushing as well, which is just fantastic, right up my alley. And I knew as soon as I saw this that Rachel freehand wrote this on, but I am still very, very impressed at how beautiful her writing is. Over the years, I've definitely seen her writing transform on cakes, and I just love that she's now writing everything in script, and it just turns out so beautiful and really nice and clear as well. Time for the fruit, and Rachel apologizes. She didn't get herself actually making the fruits. Now, our friendship is definitely very dessert-related. Anytime she does anything for me, I am super grateful. I make her tons of dinners. She makes me tons of cakes. I make her tons of macarons. She makes me tons of cakes. It really is just kind of a trade-off in that way. And she asked me this year, Ashley, what do you want for your birthday? And I said, all I want for my birthday is for you to film anything that you're making for my dessert table, and she definitely delivered. But she also did drop off amazing cinnamon buns on my birthday, as well as send me the cutest balloon. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I'm sure you saw this in my stories. So all in all, my advice to you is to get a Rachel in your life ASAP. So after she made these pineapples and the fruits, she placed them on. Oh, but prior to that, she actually placed on all of these wonderful florals, which she got from Michael's. And she did say to me, Ashley, I put a lot of hot glue on your stand. It's all good. This is why I love that stand. You can just rip everything off and the metal stays really, really nice and clean and can be used again for other purposes. This cake is 100% fake, but it is probably going to spend a few months on my display shelf. And then Rachel took this into her car for a little drive, and it's a little tricky to kind of maneuver those type of cakes because it's very top heavy due to that stand. And here's Rachel helping me set up the macarons, looking like Zoe Deschanel, I might add, today. Let me know down in the comments, do you guys think so? You really had to see her from head on. My friend and I were having a joint birthday, so she put up all of the tiki decor in her house and she hosted, which is just so lovely because I'm always hosting, so this was great. I planned out the look of the dessert table and of course, Rachel provided me with the cake and the mini cupcakes, which were watermelon, creamsicle, coconut, and pina colada. Now let's get into the subscriber submission of the video and yes, give me all of the pearly airbrushing. I love how sparkly this cake is. Definitely go and check them out, drop them a like and drop them a comment. And if you want to be the next featured subscriber submission of the video, then please follow me at SD Bake Shop on Instagram where you can either tag me in a photo or send me a photo. Any and all dessert levels are welcome. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Once again, thank you for 75,000 subscribers. Bye!